Okay, so just as a reminder, right? Uh, we want to prove today, or at least give the main steps of the proof of the following theorem. Um, we have mu, a simplicial cycle. Mu minus one cycle. Um, over k. Um, and then we look at um, the field extension of k with respect to um, sufficiently, well, I mean, for, for us it's really just uh, the linear system of parameters and L, the left sheds, um, take the field of rational functions. Um, and then what we want is that B of mu with respect to this theta, <coughs> which is now, yeah, it's a quotient of a phase ring defined over this k tilde, um, satisfies oh, our left sheds. The Holderman relations and finally um, for characteristic equal to two um, total anisotropy. Mm. All right, and to give you an intuition of the proof, let me first argue um, and give some basic reductions. So, basic reductions. And lemmas. Um, and the first thing I want to do is, okay, we have hard left sheds, um, and I already discussed some of, that some of the middle hard left sheds is the most important one. Mm, I want to do this explicitly. I want to show that essentially I can always reduce not only to the, um, to the middle one, but always reduce to a, to, to a, to a pairing and to, to really have a question about the Poincaré pairing. Um, we that kind of did this already in some cases, but I want to be explicit and just do this. Reduction to the middle. So how is this achieved? Um, so let me just recall if mu is a d minus one cycle, um, J, an ideal in B of mu and L in B1 of mu. Then um, J satisfies the Holleman relations um, with respect to in B mu, um, with respect to L, and in degree K. If um, let me, just so that the camera can catch both, continue here. If well, the quadratic form 
QL, QKL on BK um, does not degenerate on. Okay. Okay. Um, so far, so good. So um, now we want to say that really to prove Holman relations in general and in particular, yeah. yeah so G is homogeneous, great, great ideal, yeah. Ah, yes. So uh, I mean, okay. So. It's a, this is a graded ring, and this is, yeah, this is a graded idea, yeah. So, right, so this is a graded ring. And this is a, yeah. Great. Um, so, to reduce this to the middle, I need to introduce a small notion. So if I have mu a cycle, then I can consider the suspension of mu. All right, and this is, if you want, it's just the free join of a zero cycle consisting of a north and south pole with my original cycle. And so it increases the dimension by one. So, the suspension um, is free join of mu with a zero cycle on vertices. N and S. It is so N and S just said it for North Pole and South Pole for convenience of referring to them. Um, because if it was one or one and two, then I would forget which one is which. Um, all right. <coughs> so this was if this here was a, a D minus one cycle, then obviously um, the suspension will be. A D cycle. <coughs> so now let me consider any attenuate reduction of this cycle. So um, consider um, theta uh, a linear system of parameters. Yeah. Here is the definition of uh, top or relation, or you have to push that. So what's it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's also it's property of all definition system. Um, that is okay. So this is the definition, or actually, we yeah, we talked about this again. So it's more recalling it, but uh, I, I think we talked about it only for for spheres. So this is slightly higher generality. You want to prove that this. Yes, I want to. I want to say that if you want to prove this property for for ideals, then you can translate this. Um, you can you can reduce it to to a case where your basic where k is equal to d half. That's the point. Okay. That's a, okay. So yeah, let me write it explicitly. Want. Uh, proof of how yeah small want to establish want to establish Holman by only considering um, the case where D is equal to two K.
Okay, so we have a linear system of parameters for the suspension of mu. Um, and let me think for a moment of, I mean, this linear system of parameters, this is kind of a matrix of coordinates, right? So this is a matrix in um, K, um, well, the number of vertices, so mu zero times um, the cool dimension, which is in this case d plus one, right? So this is a ma my matrix theta. Um, now, um, somewhere in this matrix, there are, there are the coordinates of the vertices n and s, all right? And now what I do is I take... Um, mu zero plus two, yeah? So this is the second mu. You have two more vertices. Yes, but it's just a, uh, it's a suspension of the cycle, so it increases the dimension by one. But I mean, the number of vertices. Ah, you're right. You're right. So you're, you're right. Um, times uh, plus two times d plus one. Thank you. Yes. Right. Right. And now what I do is I project along. Um, I project along n. Right. I project along the coordinate of n. Um, and then what I get is a linear system of parameters, theta bar, um, small projection along n. And results in a linear system for, um, um, for, um, for the suspension. Uh, sorry, for, for, for mu itself, for A of mu itself. And this I will, this, this linear system I will call theta bar. All right, I can think of this actually, I can think of um, n as actually being a basis vector for, um, a basis vector in, 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 the, in the last coordinate direction. And then I also write down, in addition, okay, so, Right, in the, in the projection I have a kernel, I forget one of these uh, elements of theta, and let me call this, um, um, let me call the element that I forget L. Okay, the height, okay, so, um, the, um, let me write theta, I write it as theta bar, together with an additional linear form L that I forgot. Okay, so this is just some notation. Um, all right, and then we have the following theorem. And this is um, the following are equivalent in this situation. Um, and this is first the whole Laman relations For well, for the ideal i, or for for an ideal j in um, B mu, um, let me write it with respect to the linear system of Pater, theta bar um, in degree k or degree k for degree k, and with respect to with respect to well, now I have to give you I have to give you also the 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 the, uh, the, the thing that give plays the role of the left shards element. So with respect to L, um, and the second part is okay. I have again Holaman. Um, All of my relations for um, now. What do I have to do? Well, okay. So I take um, x n j um, in B of suspension of new 
with respect to theta, um, for degree k plus 1, um, and um, um, with respect to the linear form with respect to the form xn. All right, so just the variable xn. That's it. So j is any ideal, yeah? J is any ideal. And k, I should say, um, so um, k, um, let me make sure that I don't get, so k is strictly less than d half. All right. J any ideal in B mu theta. All right. Um, let me just. Uh, Recall the the special case of monomial ideals, right? So, um, if j is equal to i mu gamma, right? Um, where somehow this here again is um, this for me is just the kernel of B of mu to okay, so now I have to I have to say a little something. I have to say um, I have to say that okay, so I take B of gamma B of gamma in mu. Alright, so I where this object here is right, so remember that that B of mu um, was um, was defined as A of the underlying space of the underlying simplicial complex modulo the annihilator of the fundamental class. So everything that does not pair to the fundamental class. Um, and um, similarly, ay, ay, ay. right now I have um, A of gamma. Right, that is a quotient of A of mu, and then um, I do look at the induced quotient in B of B of mu, and this is B of gamma in mu in my notation. Okay, that's it. Um, all right, gamma is any subcomplex. For gamma, any subcomplex. For gamma, small if. For gamma, any subcomplex. Any subcomplex. Consider. Um, consider the following ideal. All right. Um, then, what is the corresponding ideal here? All right. What is the corresponding ideal in the suspension? Well, this is, if you think about it, just um, then xn okay, is just, well, okay, so I could take i of the suspension of mu um, and, um, well, I, here I take, I take the, the subcomplex that I get now is the suspension of gamma union the south pole of the complex um, with the underlying space of mu. And so what you see is, okay, so if I start and want to prove the hard left shed theorem, all right, then I would, then gamma would just be empty, right? I want to prove the whole Laman relations for the empty complex. That is just the, right? So then, then I just have um, the hard left sheds left. And so, I can just, every time um, 
So let's say I want to prove the left shades from degree k to degree d minus k. Then in the next step, applying this, this lemma once or this theorem once, I get I, I prove the left I have to prove the Hollermann relations with respect to a monomial idea from degree k plus one to well, okay, so I have d plus okay, I have d plus one, I increase the Sokol degree by one, but then I also minus k minus one because right, minus k plus one. And so it's really just so the top one is the same, it's just d minus k. And so you see that iteratively I get closer to the middle until I'm saying something just about the Poincare pairing restricted to the ideal. All right? So nothing fancy. Sorry, can you say what's after the suspension of gamma union? Is it S join mu? Yes, S join S. It's just basically the southern hemisphere. Okay. All right? Yeah, that's it. So, excuse me, what was a, a D and N cycle in your definition? I think you, you mentioned the homology uh, manifold, the word uh, simplicial manifold in some previous talk, but maybe you, you. Well, this is more general, right? So, okay, okay. Um, so, um, A simplicial cycle for me is just okay. So let me let me just repeat it. Okay. Also, you can just come down. I assume that you are in your office, no? Um, so um, so a simplicial cycle um, mu of dimension d minus one is a pair of well, I take a, a simplicial complex, mu bar, a d minus one dimensional simplicial complex, all right, and mu, an element, well, okay, it doesn't matter whether I take uh, the simplicial cycle now or an element of its homology, because, right, I mean, this is the top dimension by definition, um, so a mu in I could say, let me just, a cycle um, in this underlying space with respect to k coefficient, all right? The boundary is zero. Well, it's a cycle. It's a, uh, right, it's a z, right? Okay, maybe, okay, so, yeah, yeah, so. I mean, it's the same as a homology, yeah, so. Okay, and the proof, um, uh, proof is rather simple, it's really just a diagram chasing, really. So, proof, um, okay, so let's consider the left shades isomorphism in B mu, theta bar, right, L to the D minus 2K, the D minus, D minus K of mu, Etc. Bar. Um, okay, and then I will write down some maps. So let me just write down. Okay, so um, so let me um, let me note that x n um, plus x s plus l is in theta, right, is an element in theta. Okay, so let me write it in the following way. So, um, what do I mean by that? L restricted to the vertices of, of mu, all right? Because I took L as exactly the, the, the element that I lost in the projection, right? It's a kernel of this projection map. So this was an element in theta, all right? So this is in theta. Um, 
And now what I, okay, so what do I do? So now I take this, the vertical um, map here is just a multiplication with xn. Um, and so where, where do I land? Well, I land in the ideal of xn, and this I can, I can describe rather simply by taking the suspension of mu and then taking this relative to the south pole. All right, and I see that I wasn't very wise with the... Okay, so electronically I could move this now. I will not be able to here. So, um, so I will write down... Okay, let me write, out, write this down in a code. Um, and then in another row explain it. B mu um, um, S join mu. Bar, and I will explain what this means in a second. Um, this, ma this map here below is the multiplication by x to the n. Um, well, where x to the n is supposed to act as a left hand element, so, so this here is in degree d minus k. So um, what do I do? So well, I take x to the n to the d minus 2k minus 1. And this is a commutative diagram. It's all good and nice. Let me just really explain what, what this space here is. And this is really just the dual under the Poincaré pairing to, to this here in B of the suspension of mu. And I can describe it directly, for instance, by saying, um, so this is so, um, where B of mu um, um, S join um, mu bar is b of mu modulo the annihilator of I, 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 uh, annihilator of this is uh, so this is isomorphic to xn and b of b of mu theta bar ah and uh, I, I was also stupid here I have to write the suspension of mu Of the suspension of mu uh, modulo the annihilator of xn v of mu r, which I can also write as um, well. I can basically write it as the image under the partitioning map, or b mu b mu modulo the kernel of the following map. Um, so the direct sum of um, vertices in mu, and then I take um, b of the star of the vertex intersected the star of the north pole in mu as a subcomplex in the cycle. All right, and this is a commutative diagram. The top and the bottom are um, well, the top one is just the left shed's isomorphism that you want. Um, the bottom horizontal map, if you think about it, this is just the whole Laman relations for this ideal, right? So I want to recall that somehow, if I want to prove um, that a pairing doesn't degenerate, really what I only have to do is um, I have to prove an injection, or in this case, an isomorphism because they are really Poincaré dual. Um, from the ideal to the ring uh, modulo the I, modulo its annihilator, um, and then that's yeah, that's just equivalent. So this here is just the whole amount relations. Um, so I have uh, this nice commutative diagram, and now um, really somehow restricting to J gives the desired. So restricting to J gives the desired. Okay, um, and that's it. So um, um, there's nothing fancy, um, nothing too fancy to to this to this lemma. But now we can reduce to the middle, and we are happy to reduce. Uh, we 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 can, we can kind of ignore actually left shed elements then. For right, some of our left shed elements don't actually enter our calculation anymore. We really just look at 
an even dimensional cycle of dimension 2k minus 1, and we look at the middle pairing, and we want to say something about that. Right? So it's one less variable that we have to care about, one less, one less issue. Here's nothing about any point. It's just no, no, no. This is just uh, yeah. This is just general for any theta that you want. Um, and so the next, uh, the second lemma that I need is um, that um, something that I hinted at earlier, and Ofa actually asked. So this is also for him. Um, so I, at some point I claimed that. All these objects are generated by square free monomials. In particular, when I deduced, for instance, at the beginning, the Grünbaum conjecture from, uh, for our, from, um, from the left shed's property. Back then, it was kind of a side remark. Because it plays an important role here in the proof, let me just do it. Um, so now we need the second ingredient um, and this is um, square free monomial generation Um, and this is, okay, so I gave a, a simplicial complex, right, so delta simplicial complex. Um, the claim is that A of delta, um, with respect to any linear system of parameters theta, is generated by square free monomials. Um, and since I, okay, so this holds for any linear system of parameters, okay, holds for any um, holds for any linear system of parameters, but in this generality, I will, uh, I will not do it. I will leave it as an exercise to you. It's not hard. Basically, I will, since I work with generic linear system of parameters anyway, I will just give you the proof for generic linear system of parameters. Okay? Um, here. So then you say it's generated? What do you mean? I mean, is it in each degree it is generated by its property? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Each degree is, okay, so, okay, in each degree, in each grade component. Thank you. That's right. I mean, otherwise it would be trivial. That's right. Mm. Um, and here I will really just do the generic case. So, here, theta generic. You don't need to assume any kind of uh, conditions like, uh, total if you take theta is zero, I mean, empty. Maybe this doesn't work. Well, if theta is zero, then it's not a linear system. Well, I mean, so you have to have some... Uh, I mean, A for me is always cool dimension zero. Yeah, the fact that it's cool dimension Yeah. So it... Yeah. So I will just do it for the generic case, so, okay? Um, so... Um, what's the trick? Well... Let me construct a larger complex where it is true. So, um, consider K a simplicial complex uh, where it is true, right? So, K um, a simplicial complex and it's larger than, it's larger than my complex delta. Um, I always have problems with somehow which directions in the somehow in subsets I always have problems with which direction is larger because you know I mean it's the inequality but then it kind of looks as if this eats that so yeah whatever um, so this is why you say, see me hesitating when I write subset signs for them on some occasions and I might do them wrong at occasion um, so. Theta generic, okay, so um, 
such that claim is true, then in particular it's obviously true for, then it's a particular obviously true for, for delta as well, because, well, um, Right, I, well, if, if, if a larger complex, a larger ring A is, is generated by square for monomials, then the, the smaller ring will be. That's fine. So, um, what complex K then true for, then it's true, then it is true for, for delta. And so what larger complex do I take? Well, I take, okay, so if, let's, let's say delta is, um, delta is of comp dimension D minus one, on n vertices, on n vertices, then what I take for k is just um, um, the d minus one. So k for me is just the d minus one skeleton of the simplex on n vertices. Um, Right, and now because I took theta generic, um, it will be theta will be a generic will be a linear system of parameters for um, uh, for k as well. Theta is linear system for k k k. Okay, very close to be politically incorrect. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> hmm? Theta is a linear system. If one can do easily is a general case like this, yeah. you you have a you you want to make the support of a monomial bigger. So if you have a given monomial. Uh, uh, so the, the the variables correspond to some simplex. Then, by the condition of inner system of parameters, there is a linear combination of the system of parameters. Yeah. That it, so that it is, let us say, a given variable plus some combination of variables not in this uh, simplex. And then, if something occurs with an exponent bigger than one, then you can use this equation to to move to get something where where you. You lie outside the gate, so you have a bigger support, and then you you increase the support in this way until you get you must get the square. Yes, 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 yes. That is yeah. Okay, that is yeah. It's correct. That's also the that's that's also another way to do it. Yes, it's uh this is the the, the very lazy way to do it without any work because now the point is that k is shallable, so this this complete simplicial complex is shallable. Um, and for k shallable for for shallable complexes, we already saw how to give a basis in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of faces when we attach uh, attach new simplices along a shelling. So k is shallable, right? And then remember that somehow we described exactly what happens in a shelling step. So if I have a shelling a shelling step of a simplicial complex. Let me call it uh, S, um, and then I have S without the facet that I remove in the shelling. Then I could precisely describe um, the kernel here as basically K times X um, X minimal or some more. Yeah. So let me let me call it some more. I think I call it sigma F where. Sigma is the minimal phase of um, of f not in s without f. Oh, I think I wrote s without f like this. And that's it, all right? And then then you see it also immediately. So what Ofer did, what Ofer said is also correct. It's just a more okay. Um, okay, so you have to think uh, for 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 a few seconds about the linear algebra involved, but that's somehow also correct. All right, all right, and these are the two um, these are the two ingredients um, that some of the, the two kind of basic ingredients that I need. And now um, I I need to 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 basically 
do a little uh, to do a little analysis of the degree function. So um, let me let me go there and let me start with it um, a little before the break. So. Um, recall that um, oh, I should have deleted somewhere else, but recall that if f um, is a facet of the underlying space, so underlying complex of mu, um, then, well, I mean, the degree function is only uh, defined up to a multiple, but what I can do is I can just, okay, so I can just um, choose one that, that is somewhat canonical, and here's my choice. The degree of xf, right, of this monomial of the maximal dimension um, is equal to, I take mu, so uh, this is a simplicial cycle. I take the oriented coefficient with respect to f. Um, I somehow I consider my vertices ordered in some arbitrary way, um, and I divide this by the determinant of um, this um, this matrix theta restricted to f. Okay, that's um, that's a, a, an identity I need. Um, and you can equally also write down from this, once you have this, you can um, um, write down um, formulas for the degrees of, 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 of square full monomials. So let me in particular write down one formula. Um, so the following, I need the following formula in particular. And this is, I want the formula of uh, the, the degree of x tau squared. And now, okay, so remember, I really only care about the middle degree, right? So this, so mu for me is a, um, mu, a cycle of dimension 2k minus 1 equal to d minus 1. Um, and um, Really, I'm in interested in the middle pairing. So tau, the cardinality of tau should be equal to k. All right, so now this works out. And um, now I have to um, sum over f the facets of mu containing Um, um, containing uh, containing a given my given element, so get, containing tau, um, and then I have the degree of xf, and then I have to multiply the following. So product product, and then I will um, so the product is over all those f without i. Or some let me call it theta of f without i. Um, take. OK, so now theta of f without i, uh, what do I mean by that? Right? It's, more, it's no longer a full dimensional. This is no longer a, a matrix of rank d. It's a minor. So what I mean by this bracket is I take the volume element corresponding to it, and I do this for all i um, contained in tau. And then I divide this similarly by the volume element for theta uh, of f without i, where I now go over all the i's, um, or maybe I should do j, where I go, or you go over all the j's in, um, um, in f, but not in tau. OK, and this is just a, a nice formula. You see that tomorrow, um, right, tomorrow it's nice and well defined. Right, I could. I mean, if you don't want to compute the volume elements um, of a lower rank matrix, so just just add another generic vector, 
and um, you see by the scaling, it just doesn't it doesn't depend on the other generic vector to, that you that you use to compute the volume here. Anyway, so that's the formula that I need, um, and now I want to um, I want to define some differential operators. I want to define some. I want to, in the end, study. Um, 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 this is this is the volume form, right? Okay. If you okay, so think of it just. I, I take another matrix. Okay, so I take another vector. Is it a contraction of something? Yeah, yeah. You can think of it as a contraction. So. Think of it as uh, uh, this way, right? So you take another vector, a generic vector, and once you remove R, you add this other generic vector in its place. Okay? This has to be the same for all those, or all of those that you take here. And then you compute the volume of this new move. Now you have again a, um, a D times D matrix computer determinant. And that's it. All right? Um, All right. And now, what I want to oh, let me let me use this one. It's the most comfortable. So now, what I want to consider is the degree function of an element u squared. Right, where u is in um, vk of mu, and I want to I want to understand I want to evaluate this in a nice way, um, and the trick will be to to consider to define a, a differential operator here, and I will define this first. I will first consider this differential operator um, depending on tau, and in particular I will define it so given given tau of cardinality of cardinality um, um, of cardinality k um, and sigma in mu another phase um, u um, in uh, of cardinality Um, of cardinality k as well, um, and let me assume that such that um, tau intersection sigma is empty. Okay, so they don't intersect. And now what I will do is the following: for um, uh, for rho uh, an element in. Okay, so what do I do now? I take the rational functions, right? I take the, the I, I'm, I'm working in the field of rational functions k tilde, right? Which is a, the, the the rational functions where the variables correspond to the entries of the matrix theta, right? And now I want to consider them as rational functions, and want to compute. Um, um, want to yeah for, for, for now I change my perspective right so the, now these are now these are rational functions and I want to um, take derivatives with respect to the variables here okay so this is somehow my my shorthand of, of studying this function in a, in a nice way so what do I do well I want to say that um, okay so I have my matrix right theta, so this is, let me write it outside because I want to do some things inside, and then I have inside, I have, um, right, I have sigma, which is sigma 1, dot, 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 sigma k, and then I have tau, which is tau 1, dot, 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 tau k. Um, and now, I have a rational function, um, in these variables, and I want to consider what happens if I take my row sigma 1 and add to it 
a perturbation in direction of tau 1. All right, so I want to take this differential, so rho differentiated in, um, you know, uh, by, by, by taking the, 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 the rho sigma 1 and perturbing it into the direction of tau 1 and dt. And then the next thing that I want to do is, okay, so this is, this is my first differential that I take, and then I want to perturb d sigma 1 into its own direction, so d plus t sigma 1, dt, and so on and so forth. And what I end up with is a differential operator that I will call, um, that I will denote by this, so partial sigma tau tilde, and then I will just normalize this um, and say that partial sigma tau, this is just for me the whole thing normalized by the degree with d with x sigma x tau. Okay. All right. That's it. Now, it sounds a little weird, um, but it turns out that this is. Um, that this gives a nice formula. Um, let me let me go here. Um, because, for instance, I have the following lemma. If I apply this to this formula here, which, by the way, I should say is due to Lee, um, then what I get is that d sigma tau of the degree, right? So now I think of the degree as a function in, um, in these indeterminates of x tau. squared, this is just the degree of x tau um, x sigma squared. You will see later, so it sounds like for the moment that this normalization is somehow is, is a little bit stupid, but you will see later why this makes it a very nice formula, because after the break you will see that this implies that the degree of u squared um, so at least in, okay, so let's say in characteristic two, in characteristic two, this will imply that if I take this differential, and it does not matter which phase in the, in the star of tau I take, and apply it to the degree of u squared, then this will be just the degree of x sigma times u squared, um, which is a very nice formula. Um, and it's a little more complicated in, in positive, in not in positive characteristic, in all characteristics that are not equal to two, but it's still, um, but um, it's still a nice formula. So there's one correction term that we will need, and then this we will discuss. Um, also, I will discuss the derivation of this formula after the break. But now let's let's take a yeah ten minute break to to ten minutes. So let me okay, let me just clarify something. Um, so I, right, x, the degree of x tau squared, right, this depended, um, maybe I shouldn't have deleted the formula, but this depended, I see this as a rational function, right, this depends on theta, right, this is a rational function in theta. And this, this, word, this is what I mean when I write, I take the differential after, um, I, have to, I take the differential of this function, right, because it's, it's really a function that depends on theta. And then, again, let me write down, this was the degree of x sigma x tau squared. Um, let me notice also that if, if v is any vertex not uh, in the star of tau in mu, um, then um, degree x tau squared, um, 
So squared is independent of the row of theta corresponding to v, right? That's just, I mean, okay, so I was very stupid and deleted the formula, but you remember that it's summed over the degree function, it was the degree functions of the facets, right, which depended on the vertices of the facets, and then I took the sum over all these facets containing tau, but if v is not in the star, right, it does not form a face, then it's not in a facet, in particular it will, will, be, will be independent, blah, 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 blah. All right, so this is the formula. Now let me, um, now it gets actually very simple. So let me um, indicate the characteristic two case first, um, and then I, I, will, I will go to, a, to, 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 to the more complicated formula. So, um, so what do I want to prove? Well, in the characteristic two case, remember, I wanted to prove that actually something stronger. I wanted to prove that u squared is not equal to zero for all u in b, k, mu. Ay, ay, ay. Right? So, in other words, I'm saying that degree u squared is not equal to zero. That's another way of saying it, of course, right? Same thing. Potato, potato, yes. Tomato, tomato. Um, all right. So, how do I do this? So, um, by Poincare duality, by Poincare duality, and because B mu is generated by square freeze by square free monomials, there exists a sigma of cardinality k such that um, sigma x sigma times mu is not equal to zero, right? That's, that's just Poincare duality, right? Nothing fancy. Okay. Um, now let me go one further. So let me look at the ideal of x sigma in um, B mu, right, in degree d, right? I mean, this is just isomorphic to k, so this is a one-dimensional vector space. This here is isomorphic, if you think about it, this is just the star of sigma in mu. Okay, or the link of, if you want to, right, it's the link of sigma in mu. So if you think about it, if you have a cycle and you have a vertex or a face, then the link of it will again naturally be a cycle, all right? Um, so this is again a cycle. Again, a cycle. A cycle. Um, and this in degree d is naturally isomorphic to the degree k component, right? Because we took the link. And this here, right? And in particular, this here is, is, is isomorphic to k. So it's a one dimensional space. In particular, it, it is generated by a single square free monomial, right? The degree d component, the degree k component of this is generated by a single element x tau. Generated. And in fact, it doesn't matter which one you take, but this doesn't matter. Ge generated by x tau, by tau of cardinality k. Of cardinality k in, um, in uh, of cardinality k in u. Well, actually in the link, right? In the link of sigma in u. All right, fine. So far, so good. Um, in particular, I can write u, right, so u is an element in B mu, but I can write this now, I can, I can write it in B mu in, in various ways. I can write it in particular in the following form, right, I can take, I can take the component that pulls back to the link, and this is lambda tau, right, it's some coefficient 
times x tau plus some, some lambda omega x omega, where these omega are not in the star of uh, sigma uh, mu. All right, so, yeah, yeah. All right, so I am generated by a single monomial in that, in that star. So all the other com components come from outside of the star. All right, so, or I should say, I mean, so it's a class of that element, right? It's a class of this element, but that doesn't matter. I just wrote it in a specific form. Um, and now let me compute um, a, actually compute um, um, compute now um, the differential of sigma tau of degree u squared. Well, this is okay. So now, um, all right. So I, I want. So it, it's a sum. It, it's a, it, it's a degree of this boy here squared. All right. We square this little boy. Um, what happens here? Well, it's a, I mean, we're uncharacteristic too, so all the mixed terms vanish. Let me not write it down, but somehow all the mixed terms vanish. So what, what is left is just the sum of the squares of the individuals. So it's just degree of lambda tau um, squared x tau squared plus the sum over these omega, um, I will not write down, right, so they are not in the start of um, degree, um, degree lambda omega squared um, x omega squared. All right, ah, and, and the differential, of course. Differential sigma tau, sorry, differential tau. All right. Okay. So now, um, now let's look at Leibniz formula for a second because it's just so, um, so easy and nice. So if, if I have, um, well, okay, so I can pull out this, I mean, it's, it's linear, right? The degree is linear. So I can pull out um, the lambda t. So now I have, um, so I have something of the form differential of something f squared times g. All right, I'm in characteristic two though. So remember, okay, so, okay, just Leibniz formula. This is two times f times, oh, sorry. It doesn't matter actually what, what, what we have here, right? It, this is zero. And so this is just really just uh, what, is, what is left is just, um, um, sorry, two times f times f prime, right? Um, so um, what, what do I have left is really just, um, f squared times um, um, the differential after g. Um, so what I have left here is, is really just, okay, so what do I have? So this is just, this is just um, lambda tau squared times the degree. Okay, so now I take the, okay, now I take my lemma. So I take the degree of x sigma x tau, um, squared. Um, what happens to the other ones? Ah, okay, so again differential. Ah, let me write it here, sigma tau. Well, each of these are outside of the star of tau. Each of them, in particular, if I differentiate after this now, after varying the vertices along the vertices of sigma, then, um, ah, sorry, these, these are not in the star of sigma. So each of them, um, each of these omega, if I look at the star of a phase omega, they will miss one of the vertices of sigma. Otherwise, they would be in the joint star. In particular, this here will just be zero. All right? Because if I take any, so if I take star tau, if star omega in, in mu, right, contained all the vertices of, of sigma, right, right, contained all the vertices of sigma, all of sigma, sigma, then um, it's not hard to see that then 
um, well, then I would be, then uh, this here already would be zero and I'm done. So, in the notation, d tau sigma, you add uh, t times mm -hmm. sigma or tau, tau uh, t times tau. The, the column yes, yes, I add to the, to the column of sigma, right? I have this column of sigma and I add, add t times tau, right? That's right. So here, right, I differentiate tomorrow. It's, it's the columns of sigma I modify, all right? Yeah. All right, so this is just zero. Um, okay, so now I can pull this back in. This is just degree x sigma x tau times lambda tau um, and the whole thing to squared. And if you think about it, now then you can compute that this is actually degree of x sigma times u, all right? Because the only, okay, so x sigma times u, the only times it was non-trivial um, is if sigma um, well, the only time that this, that x sigma times this here is not trivial is if sigma and, um, sigma and the face of the coefficient are in a, are in a common, are in a common simplex. These here are not, so only this term remains, so this, that's what I get. But this here, by assumption, is not equal to zero. All right? Because that's, that's the way that I, has, I, I started off. Right? So now, uh, and now I'm done, right? I, I, now now that, that's it. So this, this, this finishes characteristic two. Um, all right. Okay. So now I will do the case of general characteristic. Oh, actually I should have kept, yeah, okay, you remember. Okay, general characteristic. I I'm at five four. Okay. So let's consider an element U um, um, in Okay, so let, uh, I want to say, okay, so I want to consider um, elements in U, in, in, in BK of mu with a special representation. So what I, I will look at, so at the start is U in um, K tilde of the underlying space um, and sigma, I will take a facet. So, sorry, sigma, a cardinality. So this is in degree K, this is cardinality. Um, K phase. Um, and um, and I will call U compatible defini definition definition U is compatible. With sigma, if um, and now I look at the support of U, okay. So the monomials, okay. So I can assume that U is uh, somehow the right. So this is um, the sum of square-free monomials with some coefficients lambda tau x tau. Right, or maybe I should uh, let me use uh, lambda a x a because I want to use tau for something else in my notation. Um, if first, um, the intersection of U with the star of, 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 of sigma in mu, uh, of U, with 
the star of sigma in mu. Um, if this here is of cardinality one, so is a unique um, face tau, and I will yeah, is a unique face tau, and the coefficient so u at tau, well I will just normalize it is one. Second. Um, the second property that I want is um, if I have u tau one. So then I want the the second property is that if I have um, a face um, um, if tau is any if tau prime. Is any other other face in the support uh, in in U in the support of U? Then the star of tau prime in mu um, intersected sigma is a simplex. Right, is a face of is a face of 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 of, of the of sigma, is a is a um, um, is a simplex sigma prime, and right, so face of of sigma, possibly empty. Um, and now, what do I want? Well. I want to say, oh, ah, is a face of sigma prime or empty? Um, and the coefficient of u in tau prime is independent of one of the variables, of one of the variables. Um, or actually, for me, it's enough that it's independent of all the variables of sigma without sigma prime. Okay, so this is my definition of compatible. Um, and now I will consider a slightly larger field extension. Now, what I will do is I will take my field extension in k tilde, right? k tilde, this was um, k, and I took um, the uh, field of rational functions with theta in it, uh, small with respect to theta, and then I, I now I, I add another small, small these, the, these were just the entries of this matrix, I add another copy, theta prime, okay? Um, and now what I will do, associate, I will associate to u um, um, an element u prime in k um, um, in k of uh, of of uh, of theta prime obtained. By replacing an entry theta ij with the corresponding entry theta ij prime. And now what I will do is okay, so if so theorem or lemma, doesn't matter, lemma for u compatible. Um, I will now write down, let's say, take the differential of sigma in tau, right, where tau is a unique face um, in the support of u that is uh, also in the star of sigma. Um, um, so this is as before, so degree of u times u prime. Um, 
and this evaluates to the degree of the partial differential sigma tau of u times u prime um, and now plus the degree of x um, okay so x x x tau x sigma times u squared and that's it okay so I it's a slightly more complicated formula now substitute right so notice that the differential right so the differential here does not affect u prime it's a differential after the var variables of of theta, not after the variables of theta prime. But after the differentiation, I can substitute uh, u equal to u prime. And I see that, so I have sigma tau degree of u times u prime, right? I compute the differential and then I substitute u equal to u prime. Um, this is equal to degree of the differential tau u times u um, plus, and the last term is unchanged, x sigma u squared. Oh, I didn't need, no, that is fine. Um, so, why is this good? Well, okay, so now, Recall again by Poincaré duality, we may assume that x sigma times u is not equal to zero. In particular, this here is not zero. In particular, one of these two terms here is not equal to zero. But uh, if u is in a monomial ideal, Right, if, if you in a monomial ideal um, K, okay, so before the Artinian reduction, right, in, 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 in K, um, in K of uh, the underlying space, then, okay, so U prime is just, deter is just obtained by substituting the, the coefficients. So this will still be in the monomial ideal. And this here, okay, so here I have um, the coefficients in some derivation, right? I take the co coefficients and I, I apply some operator to them, but it will also still be in the same monomial ideal. So um, it will still be uh, somehow, um, then, then so are, uh, then so uh, u prime and um, the, partial, the differential of, 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 of u that we defined. So why, why is this good for us? Well, remember the Hollermann relations, um, right, some of the, the hard left shift and the Hollermann relations, they, um, they state that somehow I want to have the non-degeneracy at a certain square field monomial ideal. Um, now I reduce this iteratively to saying something about the square field monomial ideal um, and proving just the non-degeneracy in the middle where there's no left shifts. Right, so now, okay, so I want to prove this for things in a monomial idea, represented by some monomials. Um, and I cannot quite say that U pairs with itself not trivially, but at least I have, I have two other candidates that pair, and one of them, right, if, if this is non-zero, one of them has to be non-zero, right? It cannot be, I mean, you cannot have um, um, a, a sum of three terms only equal to zero, only one of which is not equal to zero. Yeah. That's just the basic it. Okay, so now, um, okay, so now let me, let me, let me um, finish by giving you the indication of why we can, why we can reach a compatible element and then we're done, right? So why we can assume that if I have U represented in some way, um, then I can make it compatible and that's it. Um, all right. 
Da, 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 da. I think this is characteristic two, no? Yes, this is characteristic two. Continued. So, in our case, for us, um, what we are interested in is proving, right, so now we have, we have an ideal of the form I mu delta, where delta is some subcomplex, um, delta in mu subcomplex. And again, let me just write down the parameters again, mu of dimension 2 k minus 1, um, delta, um, yeah, de delta is just some subcomplex, doesn't matter. And we were looking at considering, and we consider the pairing, right, i k times i k to um, our ground field. Well, now this is a ground field theta. And now consider, okay, so now consider u in, um, well, k, k tilde of, um, of, 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 um, k tilde of, of, of mu, um, um, well, what do I want really? I want k tilde of mu relative to the complex delta, all right? Represented, okay, so I can, I can already start with saying that it's rep represented by square free monomials, uh, monomials. And now I want to say that in B mu, I can find another representative that is compatible. And how do I do that? Um, well, first of all, notice that um, if, um, if um, u times x sigma, um, okay, so I know that there exists a x sigma such that x, u times x sigma is not equal to zero. Well, no, um, exists x sigma such that u times x sigma is not equal to zero. If sigma is in the support of mu but not in delta, then we are already fine, right? Then we are already in the ideal. Um, hence, we consider only the case where sigma is in, um, is a phase of delta. Okay. Can, can you say again what you uh, you said you wanted to find a, a representative in you in B mu it's compatible. What, what does it mean to be compatible? Oh, it's essentially, it's a normalization on the faces um, that, um, okay, so compatible means that there is a unique face um, that is, well, the support of, mu, of, 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 your, of your element u intersected with the star of sigma is, is essentially just one face. And um, for, yeah? You want sigma to be in delta or away from delta? Well, I guess you can see. Um, so if sigma is away from delta, well, then we're already done, right? So we want to prove the bias pairing property, right? We want to prove that there exists. Um, so we have u in, 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 in our ideal i, I, I mu, mu delta, right? We want to prove that there is another element in this ideal that we pair with. That's a, that's a non degeneracy 
of the Poincaré pairing at this ideal, all right? That's the case that we were used to. Uh, the ideal state is, is things that are outside of them. Hmm? Ideals stand by, by monomials of faces that are outside of them. So it means? The ideal is faces that are outside of them. Yes, yes, exactly, yes. Um, but it might be that somehow it pairs only with a face in delta, right? We know that it pairs with some, with a, with some monomial of, of, of degree k, but this, this, this monomial might be corresponding to a face in k, right? Otherwise, somehow, uh, the whole thing, the whole exercise would be trivial, right? So, um, and indeed, if, if, somehow, if we have already, if sigma is already in the complement of, of delta, then we are done. So we only the only case that we have to consider is that sigma is in, in is a face of delta. And now, okay, so let me give like a a sketch of what happens now. Um, so let me let me draw delta. All right, so this is this is my delta. Um, and let me um, add sigma. This lies somewhere in delta. And now, uh, somehow, the, okay, so it, but somehow the, the complex, the support of mu, this extends beyond, uh, this extends beyond, uh, this extends beyond delta, so it goes on in some way. All right. Okay, so now I basically, I, I normalize iteratively. So first of all, I consider B of the link of sigma in, in mu. And I realize this again in degree k is just a one-dimensional vector space. In particular, I can assume the first, I can assume the first condition of compatibility. Um, we can assume that the class of u in i delta, i mu delta, is represented by an element um, well, okay, so, okay, so what, what do I mean? So it, it's, it's by an element, so the, if, if the, 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 the dimension of the link is one, then we can assume it's generated by a single phase tau. In particular, we can assume that um, by an element, let's say, okay, so let me say, the first, the, 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 the first iteration is I have an element u prime, or maybe I should use u prime, um, let me say u0, um, such that um, such that um, the support of u0 intersected the star of sigma in mu is a unique face, right? It is, is, equal to, um, is equal to tau. And this is the first condition of compatibility, right? Well, almost. I mean, I want the coefficient to be 1. But okay, so if I want the okay, so if I want the um, the uh, the whole thing to be independent, I mean, if if I want u to pair with some element, I can also just say okay, u times some scalar, u times some rational function. So I can just normalize, All right? So now we can just assume assume the coefficient is one. is 1 without loss of generality. All right. And now I have to look at um, another phase, uh, any other phase, um, sigma prime. OK, I, can, I have to look at um, faces um, tau prime, faces, uh, faces uh, tau prime in the support. All right. I have to look at faces tau prime in the support of of u, so let me write it like this. So here's another phase tau prime in the support of um, in the support of u zero, right? My already modified element, and I know that the intersection of 
star of tau prime in u with sigma is a phase sigma prime. So this might be, in this case, um, a phase instance like this one here. So this is sigma prime. All right. And now what I can do is I can look at sigma prime and extend it to the interior here by um, multiplying with a monomial corresponding to an interior vertex. So a, ver a vertex of, of, of mu not in delta. And I can assume that um, u0 times x sigma prime union this vertex in the interior is equal to 0 because otherwise I would be done because then I would already pair with something in the ideal I, I mu delta. So I know that this pairing is 0. And then you can um, just write down, OK, so um, furthermore, furthermore, um, we know that um, um, in, um, you can show that x, x, that sigma prime union v, again, is small. if I look at the link of this, v of link of this, um, is a ge again generated by a single element is generated by a single element element in the top degree. Um, and then combining these two facts, we see that the coefficient of u to tau prime um, differentiated along, um, along sigma um, must vanish. In particular, it will be independent of one of the variables of sigma um, and not in sigma prime, and hence we are compatible at this coefficient. And this we can just repeat. Okay, so this is for all the faces tau prime whose star intersects sigma, and that's it. So this, this, this combined gives compatibility. Compatibility. And this, then we are done. That's it. Um, so now we have compatibility. We're done. I mean, there was one, one place here where I cheated a little. And I said, because I said that u was just in, in k theta, just right? I said that u was, I started out in k theta, right? But strictly speaking, I, I have to look at, um, um, u defined over k theta theta prime, right? But since theta prime is a transcendental extension over, over k theta, right? Ku k theta k theta prime is a transcendental condition, uh, uh, is a transcendental extension over k theta. If I have the property over all k theta, over all elements in k theta, I have it over all elements in the transcendental extension, and I'm done. Okay, that's so just a transcendental. Theory. Transcendentality argument. That's it. And I'm, now that um, this is this, that's it, that's it. So this is the end of the argument, or at least a sketch of the argument. Um, let me let me sketch one one thing that was gained out of this um, the, this this um, this exercise of why why would we want to extend this to cycles. Um, and um, this is that we can treat complexes, that we can treat Macaulay complexes that are not, not only spheres, but wedges of spheres, essentially. So things that are called level. OK, so um, let me give an application. Let me think what, what kind of, what I can delete. So let me delete this part here. How is transcendental? Can you get by specialization? Hmm? Results uh, over. Sorry? So if, if you can you get by specialization, like in the use of theta, the same kind of. Uh, uh, whether you, you're asking whether I, get, I can get anisotropy? Yes, or anisotropy, or even whole lemon, but for not transcendental extensions. But why, why, uh, I mean, um, once you have whole lemon, 
in some transcendental, in some field extension, you have it for any in infinite fields um, over so on. If k is infinite to begin with, then you have it automatically over k. Because, I mean, it's, a, it's an algebraic geometry, con it's, an algebraic, you know, it's an algebraic condition, and once you know that there is a point where it is non-zero, then Newton normalization tells you that over k it is. The only issue is that if k is finite, all right, and then you don't have Newton normalization, and that's it. Um, but otherwise, yes. Um, otherwise, you get Holman immediately. The only thing that doesn't go through is uh, the total anisotropy that doesn't go through. Yeah. Because, right, so the, the square monomial ideals, they are defined over the smaller, they're, they're already defined over, over k. But um, an element, to say that an element is, uh, is, 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 is square free, um, you're, you're really small, or it's about that an element squares to something non zero, you're really telling something about an element defined over a larger field, and then this is different, right? So you, you just add elements that are not defined in the original k. That's, that's the issue. Um, so application um, so that's uh, the G theorem for two cohen macaulay complexes So what is a two cohen macaulay complex? Well, let's a cohen macaulay complex um, such that if you remove any vertex, it's still cohen macaulay So delta 2, t two cohen macaulay that's a definition. Um, if it's cohen macaulay and uh, for all vertices in delta, uh, if it's cohen macaulay and let me write it in the next row. And for all vertices in delta, um, taking the complex delta without this vertex, right? I, I remove the, the vertex from, from circulation and take all the other faces that don't contain this vertex, um, is, is also called Macaulay. Is called Macaulay as well. Right? Um, So, for instance, triangulations of spheres are called Macaulay, but somehow triangulations of disks aren't. You can easily show, right? Because, right, if you have a disk, ah, maybe I, perhaps I have to, sh to assume that they are of the same dimension, of the same dimension, of the same dimension. Let me assume it for safety. All right, so if I have a disk, then I could just remove some interior disk that inter intersects the boundary, but then here I will not be pure. I will be of a lower dimension. That's it. That's the issue. Okay. Um, algebraic characterization, algebraically, um, to call Macaulay, um, complexes are level. Are level. That is, um, okay, so um, I no longer have Poincare duality, but I have the following statement. So um, for all K, so for, 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 that is, for alpha in a k of delta, there exists beta, uh, two kernel of dimension, let me say dimension d minus one, makes it exists beta in a d minus k of delta 
such that um, alpha times beta is not equal to zero. That's, that's the property of being level. Notice that I did not require um, that AD is isomorphic to the ground field, right? So it's not one dimensional. Okay. Um, corollary of left shed for cycles of left shed. Huh? Ah, okay, so let me say this is the theorem of Stanley, I think, or Hoster. It's at least contained in Stanley's book. Okay. Cycles. Um, so I want left shots for cycles. Oh, well, what, I want to state the corollary of left shots for cycles. And for this, I, I introduce so. Remember, remember that B of B O. Ah, so okay. so this, this, for this one, you need also to impose some. Uh, oh, you take a general. You take a, you take a general. Ah, ah, this is a general. Gen it's just a linear system of parameters. It doesn't have to be generic. So for now, there's no generic here. All right. So I introduced B of mu. This was a this was a quotient of. All right. This was a quotient of A. Of the underlying complex of mu, and in particular, somehow it doesn't really matter what complex I take. So I take, I could have taken any simplicial complex, but then what I, what I took is basically um, the smallest, uh, the smallest quotient of this that has mu at its fundamental class. All right, and now what I define is B of m. So m is just some quotient of the top degree of. Um, my of, of m is just some quotient of the top degree of my of my Artinian reduction. So let me define B of M. Right, so what do I do? Um, well, okay, so what I can do is the following. I can take this as A of delta uh, B of M, yeah. Um, A of delta. And I take A of delta modulo the kernel over a of delta to b of mu um, direct sum over b of mu, and where mu goes over um, where mu is is basically a generating system for generators for m, right? So what do I mean by 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 by, by a generating system, right? So m Mu, I mean, these mu are quotients of, so, but, so, um, these mu v, um, what do I mean by a generating system? I mean that if I take the direct sum over these and I take the direct, the, the, the induced restriction map, so the direct sum over the restriction map, that this is injective. So mu v such that this is injective. Right? Um, and then, what does level mean? Okay, level means that um, A of delta is the same as B of the top degree AD of delta. All right. And now, what do I get? Well, I get the following variant of the left shed theorem, right? So I have, okay. So let's 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 look at b of at, let's let's look at b of m in general, right? Um, in degree k, 
and in degree d minus k. Now, what can I do? Well, um, well, I could restrict to any a single one of these b of mu. That would be a surjection. But I can also just look at the direct sum over all these mu v in b of mu. Direct sum mu v in, yeah, mu v as above. Okay, now what do I have? Well, if I have the left shades here, right, so these are, these are the, the vertical maps are injections. Um, if I have the left shades here, right, so L to the d minus 2k is an isomorphism, which is exactly this left shades here for cycles, then in particular the map up here is an injection. Left shades here. implies injection here. All right, so implies injection here, which means that L to the d minus 2k is an injection here, which means that, for instance, um, in particular that, so for instance, the dimensions of the graded components, b of m in degree i is less or equal to the dimension of the graded components in degree i plus 1, for all i less or equal to d half. And that's it. All right. Um, so you have a monotonicity. So what does this mean for the, for the level complex? Um, so in the level case, in the level complex for level complexes or for two-core Macaulay complexes, for the level complexes, the h numbers. Of, um, of delta are monotone increasing up to i uh, up to up to the half right up to the half point that is that is one of the corollaries and that's somehow I think um, where I should finish because I'm already over time so that's uh, that's why cycles are important. Um, you can now go a little beyond, um, you're just more, m way more flexible than, uh, than, than just uh, spheres and manifolds. That's nice. All right, thank you. <laughs>